This video looks at optimal predictive control where you need to estimate the disturbances. The previous videos in this chapter presented the OMPC or SOMPC control law for the nominal case and <coughs> assuming no constraints and assuming that states and disturbances are known. In practice, both the states and the disturbance have to be estimated. This video then will introduce a simple observer using an independent model approach and we're going to use MATLAB to demonstrate the potential impact this has on performance. So the key thing, how does performance change when you need to estimate both the states and the disturbances rather than assuming they are known? Let's look at the independent modeling approach then. The process model is assumed to be something like this, x equals ax plus bu and y equals cx plus some output disturbance model. An output disturbance estimate can be determined by doing something like measuring the process and comparing it to a model. Now where does this model come from? Well, a simple independent model could have an identical structure to the actual process. You'll see here I've got z equals az plus bu, but the main difference is there's no disturbance in here because we're assuming that the disturbance estimate is the distance between yp and ym. Now, once we know what this d is using this equation here, then exactly as in the previous video, we can estimate the steady state values of z and u which will give us a particular steady state output and this is for the plant and these are the equations that we use. Now when it comes to predictions and this was covered in chapter 1 the predictions for the process are going to be the same as the predictions for the model plus we add this disturbance estimate on. How did this independent model structure look then? You may recall this from the earlier chapters, so we're not going to dwell on it in detail here. In essence, we have an input which goes both into the process and into our model. So they are run in parallel. The actual process is subject to a disturbance, which we don't know, and you end up with a real output, and that's what we've been calling YP. Now the model output is called ym and you'll notice there's no disturbance there because what we're going to do is estimate that disturbance as the distance between these two signals here. So once we've got that d we can substitute that d into these expressions here and we can work out estimates for the steady state value of now this is key the steady state for the independent model and the steady state input. So the disturbance and model parameters are used to estimate the steady state but the key thing is this steady state is for the independent model and therefore because we know the states of the independent model <coughs> we've no longer got any uncertainty in our predictions. The model is simulated in parallel with a real process to estimate D so we've done that and what we're going to do is build the control law based upon the model states. So the control law you'll notice is Kz minus Zss because Z, which is the state of the independent model, is something that I know. So the control law is based on the independent model state which is known because clearly the actual state of the process is unknown. Let's give some examples then. We're going to assume no modelling errors, so assume that the A, B, C are known exactly, but we are going to include a non-zero disturbance, and the key thing here is that disturbance must be estimated. We give no information about it, and we're going to use the block diagram shown for that estimate. We'll start then with video 4, 10, example 1. Now before we look at that particular file. First we want to see what's the simulation file. Well in this case you'll see it's chap4 OMPC simulate C and this has got a subtle increase in complexity on the one from the previous chapter. So you'll notice okay we've still got this XSS and USS being estimated in the simulation loop but if you look you'll notice it's based upon this signal called DE which stands for estimate of 
the disturbance. And where's that estimate going to come from? Well, if you go down a bit further in the file, you'll see we've got simulate the model. So these two equations give you z, which is the independent model. So that's something known exactly in essence. That's your observer. And you'll see the output we've called ym. We've also got the process. Now, the process has got slightly different parameters A. See, I've called it AP instead of A, BP instead of B, CP instead of C, and it's got an actual disturbance, which you don't know. And then you'll see there's a line down here, 70, which defines the estimate for the disturbance, which is Y minus YM. Okay, the noise we won't worry about for now, that's measurement noise, which we'll introduce later on. So let's run this first example then and see what happens. And what do you notice? Well, while there's no disturbance, <coughs> so the green signal is zero, then the output of the model and the output of the process are the same. And that's because we've assumed the same A, B, C parameters. But when the disturbance changes, then you'll notice the output model and the independent model, so the process and the independent model, give you different outputs. You'll see the black line is no longer the same as the blue line. But the key thing is that the process output, this blue line, converges to the desired target. We have offset free tracking. So if we look at this, what do you notice? The model and the process output are the same for target change while the disturbance is zero because we're assuming no parameter uncertainty. But once a disturbance occurs, the process output and the independent model output will differ. Nevertheless, we get offset free tracking for the process, which is what we want. Let's look at example two then, which is a MIMO example. So here's example two, if we run this one. Now this is a bit messier because there's signals um, all over the place because there's two outputs and two inputs. But if we're careful, notice that the blue signals are the process output and these black signals with the dashed line are the model output. And again, you notice while the disturbance, this green line is zero, the two signals are the same. The process and the model give the same output and you get offset free tracking. So you get to these red lines. As soon as there's a non-zero disturbance here around sample 40, then you notice the black dashed lines and the blue lines now differ. They differ by this disturbance, but critically, the blue lines, the process output, converge to the desired output. So summarizing the observations again, the model and process output are the same for target changes while the disturbance is zero. Once a disturbance occurs, the process output and the independent model output must differ. But nevertheless, we get offset free tracking. Now, as there are no modeling errors, guarantees of convergence carry over automatically, regardless of the fact that the disturbance must be estimated. And that will be easy to show. What we're going to do next is we're going to assume some modeling errors. So we're going to assume that the parameters within the process, the state space matrices A, B, C, are going to be different. And we're also going to include a disturbance which must be estimated. So what's this going to do? We'll start then with example three. So here's example three. And let's run this one. And what do you notice now? Things are not nearly as clean as before. Now, perhaps the parameter uncertainty is a bit fierce here, but if you look at the output, which is the blue signal, and the model output, this dashed black line signal, you see the blue signal is not close to this dashed black line, even when there's no disturbance. And that's because we have parameter uncertainty. But nevertheless, we get offset free tracking. Again, when we add the disturbance here, this non zero disturbance, you'll find, OK, the black line and the blue line are still different. But critically, the blue line, the process output, gives you no offset in the steady state. So despite the signals being quite different, and you might say, golly, this parameter uncertainty is a bit over the top, we still have convergence to the correct target when the system is stabilized. So the observations. The model and the process output differ even for target changes while the disturbance is zero. And that's obvious because, as you can see here, we have some parameter uncertainty. So that's inevitable. Nevertheless, we have offset free tracking both for non-zero targets and when the disturbance is non-zero. 
Obviously, however, the control law may not be robust, and you can see that because we had relatively poor behavior. So it's robust, stable, but it doesn't necessarily have a robustly good performance. What about example four then, which is multivariable? So if we go to example four and run that one, and again, yes, this is very messy because there's lots of outputs and inputs going on, but you can see the same pattern. The blue lines are converging to the red lines as expected. OK, the performance is pretty poor, but you can see the convergence is happening. We are getting offset free tracking in the steady state, even though these black lines are significantly different. So I'm using this independent model. It's giving me outputs which actually, in this case, are not particularly close to the blue lines. But even when we have non-zero disturbances and parameter uncertainty, we still seem to be working OK. So the key observations, the model and the process output differ even when the target changes, um, sorry, when the disturbance is zero. Nevertheless, we've got offset free tracking both for non-zero targets and for non-zero disturbances. However, the control law may not be robust. Now I have chosen here some rather arbitrary parameter uncertainty and that's why we've got some pretty poor behavior, some rather arbitrary processes and arbitrary choice of underlying state feedback. But the key thing is the guarantees of convergence carry across as long as you are closed loop stable. So the extensions for OMPC and SOMPC for tracking and disturbance or rejection are straightforward using the concepts in Chapter 1. That is, ensure the performance index and the predictions are unbiased. So that's what we did in the previous video. And what we've done here is we've used an independent model to ensure that we get unbiased prediction and for state estimation. Now, the use of the independent model is quite common in the literature. You might be asking a question as to whether that's effective, given that the performances we saw here were fairly poor. In this case, SOMPC and OMPC would deal with some level of parameter uncertainty and the fact that the disturbances need to be estimated. But what we have noticed is that we can't necessarily say that this approach is robust. So although it deals with some level of parameter uncertainty and that you have got offset free tracking, you could argue that the performance is relatively poor. But the key thing is that the independent model or using the independent model for disturbance estimation and state estimation will work as long as the parameter uncertainty is small.